Right, well, welcome everybody. Um, thanks very much. It's the first um, live webinar that we're, we're doing ahead of uh, for looking at Part L um, 2021 and, and wastewater heat recovery and where that fits for, for new build residential development. Um, we plan to look at doing these probably monthly, So, um, but also uh, the webinar has been recorded. So um, as participants, if uh, we'll, we'll email you out afterwards with a link to, to the webinar. So if there's anything you want to check back afterwards, you can do so let's get uh, into it okay so just uh, just quick overview on what we're looking at here introduction to wastewater heat recovery um just a, a basic introduction um how it works who's using it and and, and why um a l bit of a focus on some products uh, that are used for for new build housing um a look at the uh, compliance element why is it being used? Why, why, why is the compliance driver there for Part L? Um, and then um, an element of uh, designing in and SAT modelling. And then finally, just a, a case study to finish and hopefully with, uh, with a decent amount of time for some questions afterwards as well. So uh, if it's okay, we'll, we'll get going. So who uses wastewater heat recovery? Well, in the UK, uh, predominantly house builders, um, new build developers uh, for Part L compliance um, and as I said, the main focus uh, going forwards is, is the new build uh, building rigs, Part L uh, new build compliance regulations, which come into force in June. And that's where wastewater heat recovery is really going to have a, a, a um, application and growth. But the main market for, at the moment is new build housing. Um, however, we're seeing a, a bigger uplift in student accommodation, hotels um, and other areas, non-residential areas where showering is quite prevalent. Um, but also uh, sports and leisure facilities um, where obviously high shower traffic environments, lots of showering, lots of hot water use uh, and looking towards the future, um, housing stock and, and domestic retrofit is likely to become a, 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 a prime as well um, as hot water uh, energy savings becomes a, a, a bigger um, concern for retrofitting as well going forward. So they're the main areas of use, but as I said, we're focusing on, on new build housing here today. Um, so why use wastewater heat recovery? Well, it offers significant energy and carbon uh, reductions for new build, uh, and, and that's, that's the basis of it. Um, it's very easy to incorporate into new build and very little layout adaptations, very little uh, design changes required, and we'll look at that as we go through. Um, it's a simple cost-effective measure to gain or help gain Part L compliance. Um, whilst nobody ever likes to think of their uh, product as a, as a, as a box tick. Um, the reality is it, it ticks the box very well for Part L. Um, it's a, a low cost measure, installs very simply um, and scores very well in SAP. And again, we'll look at that as we go forwards, but it does have real world applications and, and reduces hot water demand very significantly for showering. Um, now, in terms of how much can it reduce um, for a, a standard um, new build application, would expect anywhere between about 40 and 55% energy reduction um, from showering. So it really is quite significant, um, but there's no end user interaction required. So it's a passive heat exchanger technology, um, fits essentially as part of the plumbing infrastructure. Uh, and as such, it can't be switched off. There's no end user interaction required. Um, it, it simply works every time the shower is used, which means uh, that it doesn't get switched off. It can't, um, can't sorry, um, it won't be switched off, can't be isolated, and no filters or consumables to go wrong. So it just works every time a shower is used. Um, it's very easy to design in, um, as, as we'll uh, demonstrate as we go through. Um, and as I said, it's a fit and forget measure. It's a passive energy saving measure, um, which just works every time the shower is used. Mm -hmm. um, and it has a very long working lifespan because there's no mechanical parts, no electrical connections, no filters, consumables. Um, it is for all intents and purposes, just a heat exchanger pipe. Um, it works for, uh, has a long um, serviceable lifetime, which uh, Bayes has attributed around about 40 to 60 years on. Um, and then finally, and we'll have a little look at this towards the end, um, it has a very low embodied carbon, which whilst not necessarily a focus of current SAP 10, it is potentially going to be a focus of SAP 11 going forward. So uh, certainly worth looking at. 
Um, so Recoup have a range of wastewater heat recovery products in our portfolio, but the, the two main products that we'll focus on today are the uh, vertical pipe system, the pipe hex, um, and our underbath system, which is the easy fit. So the pipe hex is designed to work with um, showers on first floor and above. So it's absolutely ideal for most uh, standard house type layouts. And for those areas where first floor showers aren't present, so bungalows with ground floor showers or possibly apartments, um, then we have the easy fit and other products in the range. But today we'll focus mainly on those two with the, uh, with, with the main focus on the pipe system. Uh, and with that in mind, a quick uh, demonstration video on, on how wastewater heat recovery works based around that, that uh, vertical pipe system in a standard uh, house setup. So as the animation kicks in, so what we're looking at here, uh, hopefully you can see my mouse, um, is a first floor shower, um, thermostatic shower mixer, and um, the wastewater heat recovery pipe located on the ground floor. Now, normally when you shower without wastewater heat recovery, quite simply your, your thermostatic mixer will take um, a hot water from the hot water system and cold water from the incoming cold water mains at about 60 and 12 degrees and it will mix them at around about a 50-50 ratio to give a comfortable 40 degree um, shower temperature. Uh, wastewater heat recovery requires a thermostatic mixer to work and to be SAP compliant. So everything that we talk about here, we'll be talking about thermostatic mixer showers. Um, but so that, that thermostatic mixer allows the hot and cold ratio to be changed in the background to, to give a specified temperature and maintain flow rate. So that's the, that's the important part there. Um, so without wastewater heat recovery, um, you're looking at around about 50-50 mix and of that comfortable 40 degree temperature, around about 85 to 90% of the heat energy normally just goes down the drain and is lost out of the building. So it's a big energy loss without wastewater heat recovery. Uh, with wastewater heat recovery, and we can see here the, uh, the pipe located on the floor below, as I mentioned, um, what happens is the warm shower waste goes uh, down and it is run through one side of the wastewater heat recovery unit. And so on the inside of the wastewater heat recovery pipe in this instance, and then that wastewater still vents off to the SVP as normal. So we're not harvesting the gray water. We're not storing the energy. It's pure heat exchange. And that heat is exchanged with the incoming cold water main. So what we've got is warm shower waste going in one side of the heat exchanger, cold water main coming in the other side, and that then comes out preheated. And that's the basic premise for all wastewater heat recovery, all products, all, all types. It really is as simple as that. However, from there, there are three recognized installation methods in SAP, um, and that's system A, system B, system C, and they're quite simply on, on how the wastewater heat recovery is piped up. So system A, which we're showing here, is the uh, most efficient method of installation, the standard default for, for new build housing. And I'll just move on one slide if that's okay. So what we're showing here is the schematic for system A, uh, and quite simply, we're sending that preheated, uh, so warmed water, to the cold side of the shower mixer. So by sending preheated water of about 25 degrees, so we're getting a, a temperature raise of about 15 degrees on, on this system, uh, to the cold side of the mixer, it, uh, the mixer will then adjust the ratio of hot to cold in favour of more of the free issue cold and less of the generated hot water. So immediately your, your shower use uses less hot water per shower. Um, but also you can see here we're sending the preheated water back to the hot water source. So we're showing here a cylinder, but that could be a heat interface unit, a combi boiler, um, a hot water cylinder. Um, whatever that may be, air source heat pump cylinder, it really doesn't matter. We're technology agnostic in that respect. Um, but by preheating the hot water um, provider, uh, such as a cylinder, instead of now the cylinder raising from 10 degrees up to 60 degrees, it's instead raising from about 25 degrees up to 60 degrees. So there's a, a free temperature uplift. Uh, and so the boiler doesn't have to work as hard to generate hot water. So system A, reduces the amount of hot water per shower use and also reduces the amount of energy required per, um, to generate that hot water that's being used. So that's the most efficient. Um, system B quite simply just sends the preheated water to the cold side of the shower only. Um, so this is normally used for any secondary systems that might be in a, in a single home. Um, and then for completeness, uh, system C sends the preheat just to the hot water source only. Um, not seen too often in, in residential, but perhaps if you had a townhouse arrangement where you've got second floor and first floor stacked showers, they might drop into a pipe on the ground floor and then 
to make it simple in terms of, of, of plumbing infrastructure, that might just go off to the hot, uh, to the hot water source, so a cylinder in a utility on the, on the ground floor, for example. So that's the three uh, recognized installation methods, and that's essentially the, the overview of wastewater heat recovery. Uh, in terms of the, the real world savings, what does it actually save? Um, so our um, system A uh, pipe system in a, in a, in a, uh, a standard home, so covering the showers, uh, we'd expect um, so that the SAP listed um, efficiencies uh, here at 11 litres per minute, 63.6%, and at 9 litres per minute, 68.1%. That uh, translates as around about a 54 to 58% energy reduction per shower use. So it really is quite significant. And then on the, uh, the lower side, the system B, which is a, a, a less efficient installation method, but a simpler installation method, around about 40, 40 to 43% um, energy reduction per shower. So I will just uh, pause there for the moment. Um, if you have questions as we're going along, um, please put them into the chat and either uh, James can answer them or we'll, we'll pick them up at the end there. But hopefully all questions will be answered as we go along. So um, just a, a, a bit more detail on the, on the two main products there. So uh, wastewater heat recovery generally is, is divided into vertical wastewater heat recovery pipes and then horizontal systems, which generally work uh, where pipes don't work. And that's the same for us and, and other competitors on the market. Um, so if we look at the, the pipe system in a bit more detail, it, it, it's a two meter vertical wastewater heat recovery pipe. Uh, and as we showed on the demonstration, there, it, it installs, it normally uh, uh, installs next to the SVP. So it's um, boxed in next to the SVP. And in most cases, the end user quite simply won't know it's there. It really doesn't take up a great deal of room at all. Um, installed at first fix, a very simple first fix installation. Um, the wastewater heat recovery pipe here, the uh, waste uh, assembly here, and then cold water main comes in and preheated water comes out, goes off to the shower and or the hot water source. Um, in addition to what's supplied in the box, um, quite simply you need an isolator valve top and bottom uh, and a double check valve. And that's as simple as it is. Um, our particular product is the most efficient um, standard vertical um, system of its type on the PCDB, on the SAP database. Um, it is supplied with a, a turbo rotator, which is used to direct uh, the warm waste as it enters the wastewater heat recovery unit. It essentially spins it round so it clings to the inside of the uh, wastewater heat recovery pipe, giving what's called thin film uh, heat exchange. So it means that we get maximum surface contact with the inside of the copper heat exchanger. Um, and that then just clings and, and falls down to the bottom. So there's no, very little fall, falling water noise. It's not falling down the middle and landing into a, a shower trap, for instance. It's clinging to the inside and then venting off to the SVP. Um, and in terms of how much extra room does it take as, uh, to design in wastewater heat recovery, as I said, it, it boxes in next to the existing SVP. So if we've got a standard SVP boxing at around about 220, 220 mil, we're really adding around about 200, 220 mil in, in one dimension there. So it's essentially doubling the area of the SVP boxing, which really is very, very little in terms of a, a, an energy efficiency measure being incorporated into a, a new build home. Um, our particular products, uh, so all recoup wastewater heat recovery units use double walled heat exchangers. Um, what this means uh, to the developer essentially means that uh, it complies directly with UK water regulations and uh, it means that the shower trap can stay in place underneath the shower and doesn't have to be re relocated underneath the wastewater heat recovery unit. If it was a single walled exchanger, the, the, wastewater heat reco the, the shower trap should be um, moved downstream of the wastewater heat recovery unit to directly comply with uh, EN 1717. But as a, a double walled exchanger, all of the shower hardware stays exactly where it, it is and where it's expected to be. So the shower trap does the heavy lifting in front of the wastewater heat recovery unit underneath the shower trap. Um, our products are stocked by national merchants, so we can integrate directly into uh, existing uh, house builder supply chains. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, pricing, uh, very competitively priced, as you'd expect for, for volume developers, um, usually expect around about 450 to 500 pounds installed cost for the pipe system into a new build house now. Um, so very, very um, cost effective in that respect. 
Uh, in terms of installation and operation, as I mentioned, it's, it's a first fix installed product. We'd normally expect around about one to two hours uh, extra installer time at first fix. Um, only basic plumbing tools, materials and, and knowledge required. So there's no specialist tools, no um, uh, specialist commissioning required. Um, there's no planned maintenance because there's essentially no serviceable or moving mechanical parts inside. It's a pure heat exchanger pipe. Um, so there's nothing essentially to go wrong there. It's it once installed and, and tested, it really should last uh, as long as the plumbing infrastructure. Uh, and as I mentioned, there's no behavioral changes required uh, by the end user. There's no buttons to press, there's nothing to turn on. There's no um, follow-up um, filter changes or, 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 or um, uh, uh, visits required. It, it just fit and forget. Um, the easy fit, so the easy fit is, a, is an under bath system. Now, the vertical pipe systems are absolutely fantastic. They're the most cost effective, they're the most efficient systems, but they are required to uh, locate underneath the shower that they connect to because they're gravity fed. Um, so where that doesn't work for ground floor showers, for example, or as showers in apartments, uh, we have the easy fit. So this is a direct under bath system. Uh, it locates in, in the void space directly under the bath, works in exactly the same way, Warm waste goes in at one side across, uh, across the heat exchanger and um, cold water main comes in, comes out preheated on the opposite side. Um, so the beauty of the easy fit is it locates in that unused void space under the bath. So it really is uh, very um, compact uh, and, and doesn't take up any extra space or any usable space uh, in, in a new build or an apartment where space is obviously at a premium. Um, not as efficient as the vertical systems by nature of design, but around about two thirds the efficiency. So it still is quite significant. Um, ideal for apartments, for retrofit, for ground floor showers, um, can be installed under a bath or under a suitably sized riser tray. Um, and as I said, very simple installation and, and same basic premise, warm shower waste goes through, uh, vents off on the other side, goes off to the SVP, cold water main comes in, uh, goes through the unit, picks up that residual heat and sends it off to the shower, uh, thermostatic mixer, hot water source, or ideally back to both. Um, although the, way, the uh, easy fit system is a less efficient system than the vertical pipes, uh, the, the way that SAP calculates uh, hot water efficiency and shower water efficiency in apartments tends to mean that uh, it can score very similarly to the vertical system. So um, they're, they're priced very similarly through the merchants and therefore the, the, their impact can be quite similar in terms of a uh, sat points per, per cost. So again, it really is a, a, a something to consider if you're looking at uh, apartments, certainly with uh, main showers or primary showers, shower over bath, it's, it's absolutely ideal. Um, obviously, not all um, showers in apartments are showers over baths and certainly there's a trend towards uh, low profile riser trays um, in apartments now and that does cause problems for the easy fit which needs around about sort of 85 to 105 millimeters clearance to, to fit under a shower tray. Um, so we have developed a pumped uh, upgrade system for our existing pipe. Um, so rather than being passive and gravity fed, it's now actively fed with a pump. Um, this product is just being sat listed at the moment, is due to be released um, next month now. Um, so this should be available very shortly. And essentially it leverages our existing uh, wastewater heat recovery pipe, so market leading pipe technology, and uses a, a, a pumped system with a buffer, buffer cylinder, which allows that wastewater to be pumped up and over the unit. And then in this way, the, the pipe can be located in a service void behind the shower on the same floor uh, and the, the pump system can be accessible. It offers very flexible um, uh, design in an installation. So it, it, there's, there's some um, ability to locate the pump slightly further away from the, from the pipe itself. So it offers flexibility in terms of designing um, and it, it really does um, complete the package in terms of wastewater heat recovery for all new build residential um, scenarios. Um, so just to sort of look at the uh, overall landscape and, and, and the direction of travel for, for um, hot water and, and wastewater heat recovery uh, in terms of compliance. Um, if, if we look at um, the energy budget of a sort of uh, traditional average UK home, um, historically, space heating has always been the biggest energy user. Hot water, 
um, around about 18 to 23%, um, and then appliances, uh, generally the, the other part of that. Um, but as, sorry, um, this, this is based on um, average, uh, average data from Energy Saving Trust for homes from about 15 years ago. So um, covers most sort of 15, 20 year old and, and beyond homes. Um, so pretty much the standard. Um, within that sh uh, hot water production, showering pr is around about 50% of uh, hot water use or hot water generation in, in housing. And that can be up to around about 50% in, in apartments. So showering really is the lion's share of, of, of hot water use and therefore whatever we can do to reduce that demand is, is, is significant. Um, as I mentioned earlier, about 85 to 90 percent of the, of the heat energy from shower water goes down the drain is normally lost, um, which means that when we, we look at that back to that um, average home, we can be looking at around about 10 percent of, of a home's energy budget going down the drain and being lost via shower water. So it really is quite significant. Um, and obviously, as we uh, move forwards with uh, compliance and uh, space uh, heating measures, uh, fabric and air tightness becomes tighter, uh, space heating becomes reduced. And if we sort of look at that in terms of uh, a passive house level um, fabric and air tightness, um, the space heat demand is reduced significantly, but there's no reason to think that showering demand or hot water usage is any different in a highly uh, efficient home in terms of fabric than it would be in a standard home. So, uh, but the relative amount of hot water use, the relative amount of energy used for showering and the relative amount of energy going down the drain without wastewater heat recovery is all increased. That so means that it becomes a much bigger concern as, as our homes become much more uh, efficient in terms of fabric energy efficiency. Um, so the um, future home standard for 2025, excuse me a second, um, does seem to recognize this and is, is um, looking at um, measures which can reduce uh, energy demand across the board, but also looking at um, hot water measures as well as uh, fabric efficiency measures. Um, the idea with the future homes uh, standard, as I'm sure many people here are aware, is that um, we, new homes from 2025 will be produced with um, measures in place which will not only reduce their immediate carbon um, emissions by 75%, but they will be ready for the grid to decarbonize fully to 100% um, decarbonization without any retrofitting um, required. So we see wastewater heat recovery as a demand reduction technology being a big part of that going forward. It reduces energy demand and therefore helps decarbonize homes going forwards. Um, and the good news is, is, is that the regulations going forwards now seem to be recognizing that. So um, part L, um, sorry, Future Home Standard 2025 is still yet to be consulted on. So we're not sure what that's going to look like going forwards. That's um, due to be consulted on in um, 2025, I'm sorry, 2023. Um, but in the meantime, we have the uh, current Part L regulations 2021, which is seen as a stepping stone regulation to that full um, all electric uh, heating and, and hot water systems. So the, the, the real focus now and, and the focus of, of this presentation mainly is on, on these stepping stone regulations and how wastewater heat recovery fits into that. Um, so um, Part L 2021 uh, went live in June uh, this year, so in the summer this year, uh, with a one year transition period. So all homes in England from after June 2023 will need to be built to the new regulations. Um, and for the first time, the new regulations have recognised wastewater heat recovery in the notional dwelling, um, which is the um, BRE's most cost effective or prescribed recipe for uh, achieving new build compliance. So. The, 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 the main elements are um, increased fabric, uh, an increase in air tightness, um, gas boilers still being used because this step in stone regulations, um, but with PV, uh, wastewater heat recovery, uh, and plus or minus uh, flue gas heat recovery on, on, on some, it would seem. Um, so yeah, so wastewater heat recovery being included on the notional dwelling is really um, cementing its, um, the, the um, thinking that hot water demand needs to be reduced in the same way that uh, insulation reduces spacing to demand and, and waste. Um, so going forwards um, 
under new regulations or current regulations, gas boilers are still permitted. The expectation is that around about 80 to 90% of new builds will be using gas. Um, obviously this uh, is, uh, heat, heat pumps are expected to dominate um, going forwards with um, future home standard 2025. But at the moment it would appear that the infrastructure for uh, heat pumps in terms of um, supply and installation isn't really there. So, um, and also the infrastructure transition to all electric um, is, is a big step, certainly on big developer sites where um, obviously gas, um, gas infrastructure is already in place. Um, so the expectation is that gas boilers will be used in the main on, on part L 2021 and therefore um, the most cost effective um, method uh, or a suite of measures will include wastewater heat recovery, upgrade to fees, uh, gas boiler and, and PV. Um, so why are volume developers looking at wastewater heat recovery? Well, in, in addition to those, um, it allows the use of, of known technologies. So gas boilers already known, uh, good, good infrastructure, good um, uh, installation infrastructure there. Um, it allows the adapt a simpler adaptation of existing homes. So if you've got sites that are straddling across regs, uh, big sites that are likely to be going across after June 2023, um, it allows um, existing cavity sizes uh, to, to be maintained and just a, a, essentially a bolt on upgrade to help increase with a, a number of other measures. So um, this um, table that we're showing here is, is a table from the uh, Future, Hub, uh, Future Homes Hub where they've done um, lots of work on not just the, the 2021 fabric notional dwelling and future home standard notional dwelling, but also on um, essentially current um, uh, 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 fees um, or commonly current fees and looking at how to upgrade to, to achieve um, part L regulations. And across the board, they see wastewater heat recovery being used uh, across the board, even um, quite notably with, with air source heat pumps and direct electric because of the secondary benefits of, of reducing overall um, electricity use, uh, reducing costs to the end user, and also reducing things such as um, uh, short cycling and uh, reducing the uh, overall uh, hot water capacity and things in cylinders for air source heat pumps, for example. Um, it, wastewater heat recovery will help with a, an easier um, infrastructure transition. So obviously if you're maintaining, uh, staying with, with gas boilers going forwards and straddling regulations, uh, wastewater heat recovery will help with that and that saves having to upgrade to um, other inf in infrastructures to go forwards. Um, and it's a fully scalable technology. So um, Recoup are uh, poised to um, scale our business significantly and maintain our, our, our market share going forward. So um, it really is a technology which is uh, designed and ready to, um, to meet the demand for um, uh, Part L 2021 and beyond. Um, so, uh, sorry, kind of rushing through that because I know we're kind of short on time, it would seem. Um, but um, I just want to cover through um, just a, a little bit on designing in wastewater heat recovery and a bit of on SAP modeling for the SAP modelers that we might have on the on the call here um, and just essentially how, how simple it is and, and that you can lean on us as much as you need to really for, for support. So um, in the most cases um, a single wastewater heat recovery pipe is, is enough to cover um, showers in, 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 in a standard at home and it's certainly going to give a single pipe will give the biggest uplift in SAP uh, and certainly the most cost effective. Um, apartments, one, two, three um, bedroom houses, they can normally be covered with a single pipe to the main uh, ensuite shower and that will give the biggest uplift. Um, on larger homes where there might be multiple showers, um, occasionally uh, you will need uh, more than one wastewater heat recovery pipe. Um, however, it's worth noting that um, if you can engage with us early or consider wastewater heat recovery early, perhaps uh, design uh, showers, um, so ensuite showers and showers over baths back to back. Um, quite often a single wastewater heat recovery pipe can be used to cover both of those and therefore it's reducing the, the overall cost and the installed cost. Um, so it's uh, early consideration if you're, if, you're, if you're part of the design team, early consideration of wastewater heat recovery can, can help and certainly um, we're more than happy to support. I mean, if there's one takeaway from this, it would be to, to lean on us, lean on the technical team here, um, and we can support you as much as possible with just simple floor plans um, and, and advice throughout. So on most cost-effective voice for the heat recovery systems for, for various house types or group designs and things. 
Um, so just to look at a just a, 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 a typical three bed, two bedroom um, uh, house type. Uh, what we're looking at here, this is just a, a, an example with a, a master en suite with a, with a shower only, uh, a family bathroom with, with a bath and no shower over in this case, although obviously with a shower over bath that would also work. Um, and quite simply, as I said, uh, a, a pipe installed as system A to the master en suite is going to give the biggest uplift here. So that's what we would look to model. Um, if you were to send uh, drawings across to Recoup for support, we can always um, go through those house types. We can send back um, a tabulated list of, of best options for you. Um, we'd normally supply these with specification notes so that you can uh, attach the, the correct specification uh, to the drawings um, with design and installation notes, which ideally would follow um, through the, the, the journey through to installation. So the installers know exactly what's, going, what's due to be installed and where. Um, but also for SAP assessors, um, we can supply these with the, um, with the PCDB numbers um, already attached, which makes it much easier when it comes to uh, modeling in SAP rather than searching through lists, which I'll uh, just demonstrate very quickly here. So um, SAP 10.2 is now live um, and wastewater heat recovery is, is um, fairly simple to model, but there are a couple of, um, where we've had feedback from, from um, SAP assessors, occasionally they're missing um, elements of it. So I'll just sort of run through here. Um, to install, to, to design in wastewater heat recovery, essentially you, you um, check the box for wastewater heat recovery. So if it's just a single system, it would be um, instantaneous uh, wastewater heat recovery system one. If there's more than one system, uh, then there's the option for instantaneous system two. Um, you would then uh, select the uh, wastewater heat recovery product that you intend to model. So here we're showing the, uh, the recoup pipe hex uh, as system A. Um, now that's searchable within the database, but it does take a little bit of uh, searching through because there's multiple products there, lots and lots of products. Um, so alternatively, you can put that PCDB number in and that would just populate that straight away. Um, if there's any baths or showers over baths present, you literally uh, na name them here. So put them, um, if for instance, our, our example would have one bath. Um, so we'd put number one now. Um, and then the important part here, we need to um, click to add the number of showers. So you click the plus here, that opens up the tab here, and then we can enter a description, for instance, ensuite shower. Um, we would uh, add that it's um, connected via either a combi or an unvented cylinder, um, via an air source heat pump, et cetera, et cetera, however, however the hot water um, is supplied. Um, and then you can specify the uh, flow rate of showers now in, in SAP. So, um, 11 litres per minute was the default for last um, incarnation of regulation. Um, most house builders now, or certainly specified fires, seem to be looking around about the 8 or 9 litres per minute. The advantage of dropping the flow rate of the showers, not only does it reduce water consumption, but it also increases the efficiency of the wastewater heat recovery unit. So there's more SAP points available. So uh, if you're struggling for compliance, it, it's certainly worth looking at um, reducing the um, or considering the flow rate of the showers that you might have specified. Um, and then importantly, uh, you need to tick the box um, to connect the shower to the wastewater heat recovery uh, unit that you've specified. And then from there, that will then output. Um, obviously, uh, good practice to save as you go along as well, because it's an online system now. Um, so just in terms of um, that, that typical um, modeling example we were looking at, um, whether that would be a, a three bedroom terrace or detached, um, we're showing uh, with that one wastewater heat recovery system installed to the ensuite as system A, uh, we're getting a primary energy reduction of around about 10.7% to 10.8% uh, and a CO2 reduction of around about 11%. So it really is quite significant in terms of uh, the SAP points gained or the, or the primary energy reduction in SAP um, and, and certainly for the installed cost it really should be one of the best ratios of, of SAP points to cost installed cost available uh, on the PCDB database. Um, now in addition to uh, the SAP modeling if you need more granularity um, not necessarily for 
uh, new build residential projects, but if you're looking at um, uh, bigger projects for apartments uh, and, and modeling an SBEM or um, uh, non-resi projects, we can look in complete granularity and produce uh, um, calculators which are bespoke to projects. Um, I won't dwell on this too much because it's probably quite small on, on a lot of screens as well, but um, we can show, um, so this is still based on that three bedroom um, standard default SAP model. Um, so we're showing here the, the kilowatts of energy saved, um, the reduction of uh, hot water demand or energy demand um, from uh, wastewater heat recovery used, uh, installed costs, uh, we can show ROI and savings based on different fuel types. Um, what I will um, point you to on this one just uh, is just keep in mind the uh, kilograms of CO2 savings per year. So this is for gas, um, for direct electric and for air source heat pumps. Um, the reason being is if we look at the embodied carbon um, contained in the wastewater heat recovery units. So um, Recoup worked with, um, with Sibzi and, and Letty on the development of the TM65 standard for embodied carbon uh, recently and um, were able to get um, early um, uh, calculations for our, our pipe product in terms of embodied carbon there. Um, because the majority of, of our product uses uh, copper, um, which is uh, infinitely recyclable and also highly recycled in terms of primary material. Um, we have a, a very low uh, embodied carbon score. Um, the, we also operate a, a, a circular economy model in terms of manufacturing um, and a buyback scheme and, and, and end of life buy, a buyback for um, end of life products. Uh, and this ultimately gives us a very low embodied carbon score. So um, the, the calculated figure there was 59 uh, kilograms of carbon per product. Um, and when you compare that to the annual uh, savings on a three bedroom home, you can see it really is very um, small compared to the annual savings. So in terms of, um, can't quite measure it this way, but in terms of uh, the, the, the embodied carbon per product could realistically be offset by half a year or even sort of a, a third of a year's use in a standard three bedroom house type. So it really is very low embodied carbon. So certainly something to consider uh, if embodied carbon is, is something you're considering as, as part of your uh, journey going forwards. Um, so that's uh, as far as I'm going to go with the designing in for, um, for, for, for housing. Um, I'm more than happy to sort of discuss case studies and things offline or, or look at individual um, projects and house types and things. But I do just want to very briefly look at a, a apartment scenario as well, just in terms of designing, just in case people are looking at this for apartments as well, new build apartments. Um, and in the main, most apartments follow a very similar pattern, um, often a shower over bath as, as the primary and potentially a, an ensuite shower um, if they're big enough for, for a secondary shower. Um, so in the main, as, as we'd said, that, that easy fit located under the shower over bath is, is, is going to be uh, normally the best option, the most cost effective option uh, for, for standard uh, apartment types. Um, however, if you do have uh, ensuite showers as well, then the pipe hex active is, is, is probably the next best option there. Um, and certainly something that in terms of modeling may give a, a bigger SAP score um, against the installed cost. So uh, that's there. So um, just on to, uh, sorry, I'll pause for a moment if that's okay. Just to look at, um, so we have case studies, etc., on, on the website, which um, you certainly have a look at for, for new build housing. But I wanted to look at the um, uh, focus on the, the, the Barrett Z house, which is um, a um, exemplar home that's been built uh, with um, in conjunction with Salford University. And they're also um, looking at uh, an, another um, a version with the Energy House 2.0, which is a, a, a looking at this and, and measuring uh, much more granular with much more granularity. Um, however, the, the Z House was a, a, a holistic um, look at how to um, tackle um, carbon, net carbon, um, zero carbon homes um, with technologies that are available now, but also um, look at a much more sustainable, sustainably um, um, active home going forward. So it's essentially looking at the sort of 2030 and beyond with, with today's technology. And, and Recoup have been um, partnered with, um, as supply partner to, to Barrett 
uh, David Wilson since uh, 2013. So we're very happy to have been included on this project. And I think it, what it does demonstrate is um, that wastewater heat recovery really is uh, part of that um, measures going forwards and into the future. And, uh, and, and this demonstrates that. So um, the, 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 um, there's around about um, 40 different technologies that have been used and wastewater heat recovery being one of those. Um, the pipe hex was installed to um, the ensuite shower and the shower over bath. Um, and as you'd expect, um, boxed in next to the SVP. So it really is um, very little outward um, uh, inclination that it's there. Um, and as we can see here, it really takes up very, very little um, uh, floor space on the unit, but is reducing um, the energy use by around about 55%, despite the fact that um, there's air source heat pumps and there's um, very low flow shower heads being used. So it just demonstrates that going forwards, wastewater heat recovery is, is, is a, a technology that, that should be taken forwards. Um, in terms of resources, um, we have a lot of resources online that we can support you with. Uh, installation videos, YouTube videos, um, technical presentations, online learning tools, um, and also um, a, a studio here which we can uh, produce uh, bespoke um, training videos, we can bespoke um, bespoke toolbox sessions for you. Um, so if, if you're a developer looking at taking this forwards and want to integrate wastewater heat recovery into your supply chain, we can support you all the way through very much to the installer level, um, through technical presentations with uh, technical teams and also on uh, design in store early stage. Um, and just finally, because I'm, I'm going to wrap up now, if that's okay, and hopefully we can get some time for some questions. Um, we've been operating as part of our sustainability drive, um, a CPD for trees um, initiative. Uh, any um, participants on our um, webinars and CPDs, if you can fill in your um, link at the end here, um, we'll generate you a CPD certificate, but it will also um, donate um, uh, 25 trees um, as part of our um, sustainability drive and CPDs for trees drive. And if that's okay, I will hold that there.